The next start, <coughs> this is a BBC model B that don't work. It's a V-Bay. Um, and I've given taken the top off. It's really in quite a bad way, this computer. Um, <coughs> gave that a bit of a flash clean up last night. This is probably blown because it don't work. It's missing the key, it's filthy. Um, a bit sorry for itself. It's a wreck, so first thing I'm going to do is take it apart, take this out, change the capacitors. I think this all works off uh, 5 volts of ground, um, so you can power it off an ATX without doing this. But looking at this, that supply is held in with three screws by the look of it. Take that out, just a word of warning, this does contain voltages, so I'm going to be careful with it. Keyboard just unbolts there and there, really clunky this, isn't it? Keyboard ribbon just pops out um, there. We've got a speaker connection here. I think I'm gonna, these little caps, these orange things are going to change as well. Right, just for good luck. So that's it open with the board. And that's the keyboard out. Uh, let's get the power supply out. So it's just those three screws holding the power supply in. So there's no casing on the other side of the power supply, so just be careful, pick it up without touching the underside of any of these and then we've got to get this threaded through somehow and that's got a plug on it so um, let's take that apart otherwise it's not going to come out so it looks like power in, power out so those are where you disconnect the board and it looks like that capacitor there and there's one under, just under there, and the square ones, the oblong ones, the X2 ones, are the normal things that fail. Um, these look okay, but we test them. These are, as I say, these have got like 250 ratings on them, so uh, careful, I don't know how to get this out. So I've just probed around on that power transistor, just checking there's nothing on that, which there isn't. So, uh, I'm not worried about that. So, I've cut the uh, bit of um, zip tie that's holding that on, and then to get this through, just go up one of the things with a screwdriver, get it through, and it'll go that way, and go the other side, get it through, go that way, but it won't come out until you get the board out because things are in the way. And I think you've got one, two, three screws holding it together. These are pretty tight to get them off. We'll just use the pliers and then leave them out with an insulated screwdriver. And this is just for my records that this one goes on top, that one goes on bottom. Both here, it's got to come off. That'll shove through and then I think there's an earth there as well. So get those off. So I've got the earth out of that side, I'm just putting that back on so I don't lose it and forget. And then we've got um, another earth there, I think. So we've got to get that off under there. We've got that off and just uh, put the screw back on so I don't forget. So they've put this on for a reason. Um, so we've got to get rid of that. I had to pop that through back and force it a bit. That was a pig. Got the switch out. It's got these retaining clips that you have to pop in with a screwdriver from behind. Four of them. So you've got one, two, three, four, and you've got to wheel it out. Now the board should come out, hopefully. Here's the uh, board out, finally. And let's have a look, make sure there's no voltages on these. Check those with the multimeter. The only thing, I'm just making sure there's no volts on that cap. On that cap. I'm doing this with my left hand, it shouldn't really do, but nothing there. Got this little kit from Electro Computer Shack which replaces the capacitors. You can get them from Maplin but they're going to be the wrong one so I can sort of get them. Uh, so what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to replace those capacitors which I think are this one, uh, this one and this one. Um, these are not um, polarised, that one is. It's worth checking them right, I'm sure they are from this guy, but the ones from Mechlin weren't, so yeah, that's 102 nanofarads, which is 0.1 microfarads, and that's capacitor 2. Capacitor 2 is this one. Why is that working? <coughs> this 
is the original capacitor, it started to fracture along the side there. Should be 100 nanofarads, it's 410. It's got 11% voltage loss on it, so that's probably not helping. Mess around with it a little bit to get the pin pitch the same because it's not, there it is. Seeing don't matter which way around, it doesn't look shiny, I've been at it three times, I think it's because the heat sink's so big. And I'll have one more go at it to try and get it shiny, but that's pretty much on. There's the other one off. Solder from the other side of the ball. Check that one. So that should be a uh, 10 nanofarad. Oh. The 10 nanofarad, so it's not actually that bad, that one, but we change it anyway. Dropped a little bit of blue tack on to hold it because I don't want it touching the fuse, obviously, so I'm just keeping it there while I turn it over. So that's now in. And then C9, which is this one, which is a proper, well, proper, it's a, it's a polarised electrolytic capacitor. So have a look what we've got here. It should be 105 degree one, hopefully. Yeah, it is. Put that in. Just make a note which way the negative leads is going towards the big caps there. And that cap is supposed to be two, 220 mark farads, it's actually 953 peak farads. It's turned into a resistor. Think. So that is well out. 220 plus 953. So, yep, forget that. Sold at the two main reservoir caps. This is my own notes. That's the way around they go. Should be marked which they are. So, I'm going to test these. So, the first one looks good. It's supposed to be 100. It's 100. The ESR is low. The second one's good. It's supposed to be 100. And the ESR is low. So, yeah, happy with them. Those caps back on, I bent the pins over before soldering on, I'm really gone out and with the soldering iron at 400 degrees just to make sure they're on properly, I will go over them again, last thing. Obviously I've checked the fuse, checked the rating on the fuse as well. Testing all these caps, that one's fine from there. I'm here, I'm just going to do a quick dirty test on the transistor. So I'm going to put one of the, on the base, I think this is the base, and then virtual emitter, I don't know which way around it is. Um, just make sure there's conducting in one way and not the other and it is so this looks like the middle is positive and the other two are negative and um, I can't really show you this <coughs> without setting something hold on a minute so you're currently surfing in a Johnson's baby bud carrier but uh, again make sure there's no voltage on this but there's the multimeter so it's showing open circuit There is a voltage drop between the base and even the collector will emit it that way. There isn't that way. Which is right, because it's a diode, effectively. And there's a drop between that and that. Normally it's 0 0.6, 0 0.7, but hey. And there isn't that way. So it looks like the transistor's working. But without taking it. But it's encouraging. I'm not going to bore you the details, but I'm just going to take all of these out, check them, put them back. So it's all capacitors checked. You don't need to do this really, but I'm just uh, being honest about it. These were all bang on. All of them. These were bang on. The yellow one <coughs> was screwed, and the other one was not bad. And that one was bad. That one was well out. <coughs> so. I'm going to cut the little checks on the transistor as well, which you can also do from the other side of the board there. You can see where the base emitter will collect are there. Um, I'm going to just double check my video to make sure none of these are on backwards. I'm taking pictures and then I'm going to put it back in the case. Then I'm going to check the voltages on the supply once it's in here, not before. Quick check and swab over with some ice props to make sure there's no blobs of sold because it's obviously high voltage stuff so make sure there's nothing left over. It could bridge anything. For a bit of a fight I got that back in, put the board in first and then you have to wiggle it and make sure you don't knock much of this. And if you're wondering and struggling, oh the fucking light in this, sorry my language. If you're wondering and struggling, that's the way it goes round. So the point at the top, or what will be the bottom. Okay, so I finally got that earth on, that screw was particularly attention seeking and of course the nut, or the washer rather, wants to fall in 
and it wants to fall under where it'd be most difficult so obviously it wants to get in under there and short something else just why I did it was to turn it up that way use gravity it still will give you a run for your money but you can get it on there and uh, kiss it goodbye I'll get shouted out that for black tape in this that is actually okay the strain relief's fine on it I just don't like the fact that I've chipped the back of it so I'm going to wrap it in tape slide that back on for strain relief supplies back in but before powering up I'm just going to desolder this so I've marked which one's the centre pin a bit of tape so I know what I'm doing desolder that take the board out and while the iron's on, might as well swap these six caps. Very easy. All recapped. Still pretty tidy underneath, so good. So the only things are this modulator's rusted to hell. I'm going to use the composite out. And these um, things are nice to hell. I'm going to give it a blast with some cleaning stuff and then put it back together and try it out. Okay, so I some uh, one side with some al al prop. Given the case of once over with some ice prop, but let's see if it works first before we go into one. To get out in the garden, plugged it in, make sure it didn't go bang inside. Didn't. And I've just checked here on the 5 volts, we've got POS 5 from ground, and we've got minus 5 volts on that, so let's plug it in and see what happens. The modulator might not work because it's so rusty, but let's see. The machine is pretty sorry for itself. It's, uh, I'll put it back together, as you can see, the light's working. Bit of a giveaway, really, that it's going to work, but. Uh, the case needs some screws. I'm missing a button here, it needs a good old clean up. But, ta da! And that is with the rubbish, rusty old RF output. So if I get the composite working, it should be good. So let's just do a little test. So it looks like the logic's working, I just did a little program. I actually learned how to program on these when I was a kid, but there we go. Everything's working, needs another key, but and a bit of a clean though. Worth doing. See you later. Cheers, bye.